Hello everyone, welcome to PG Partshala. Today it is the paper 13 that is Physiological Biophysics, module number 3, Blood Gas Analyzer. And I am the content writer. My name is Dr. Atanu Roy. I am a senior resident working in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, from the Department of Physiology. Now, in this module, we will be discussing about the various things. So, the objectives of the modules are the introduction, some basic concepts of electrochemistry, concept of pH and blood gases, components of a blood gas analyzer, which are the reference electrode, the pH electrode, PO2 electrode, PCO2 electrode and the ion sensitive electrode. Next we will be discussing about is the calibration of the blood gas analysis and later on we will go into the specifications of blood gas analyzer and finally we will come down to the summary. So let us come to the introduction. Homeostasis is the key for the survival of human beings. For the optimal performance of the body, it is very essential to have a constant pH so that all the biochemical reactions can occur without any derangement. The changes in the pH is expressed in the form of changes in ionic and gaseous constituent of the blood. So, to understand in what phase of the body is it in, it is important to measure its gases and ionic constituents to get an idea of the pH. In this module, we will learn how they are measuring using the blood gas analyzers. Now, let us come to the some of the basic concepts of electrochemistry. Now, let us recapitulate what is the oxidation? It is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the gain of electrons. Reducing agents, they are electron donating agents and oxidizing agents, they are the electron accepting agents. Now, what is potentiometry? In order to understand the various types of electrodes in the modules, we must first try to understand what potentiometry means. Potentiometry is a field of electroanalytical chemistry where the potential is measured in their no flow conditions. The potential thus measured can be used to determine the concentration of any component of interest in the analyte solution. The potentiometric electrochemical cells. The figure 1 shows a typical potentiometric electrochemical cell. This electrochemical cell consists of two half cells. Each of these half cells constituents of an electrode and a solution of ions. The activity inside the solution determines the electrode's potential. The two half cells are connected by a salt bridge. The main reason for a salt bridge is to avoid the oxidation and reducing H reactions taking place at the same electrode. This prevents the movement of electrons from the surface of the electrode. So, they pass via the potentiometer. The salt bridge consists of an inert electrolyte. The salt bridge ends are fixed with porous frits. Now, frit is a ceramic composition that has been fused in a special fusing oven quenched to form glass and granulated. The porous structure permits the movement of ions of the electrolytes freely between the two half cells and the salt bridge. This movement of ions in the bridge completes the electrical circuit. Now, by convention, the electrode on the right is cathode and the electrode on the left is anode that we can see in figure number 1. So, we have understood how interesting it is. Now, 
in also we can see the reactions that are taking place at anode where you can see the reaction in this there is a generation of a A plus ion and at the cathode there is the B plus ion which is accepting an electron and it is forming a B. The potential of the electrochemical cell is given by the equation which is written below as you can see in the text and also in the PPT. Also we must remember that in electrochemical cell cathode is considered the indicator electrode and anode the reference electrode. Till now in the reactions we saw how electrons are moving and completing the circuit. This also leads to the development of potential. The potential of an electrochemical cell can be found out with the help of Nernst equation. Now in this the Nernst equation is given as E is equal to E0 and RT by NF IN is the logarithm and Q where E0 stands for the standard state reduction potential. T is the temperature in Kelvin, R is the gas constant, N is the number of electrons in the redox reaction, F is the Faraday constant and Q is the reaction quotient. Now at temperature of 298K which is 25 degrees the equation is E is equal to E0 into 0 0.5916 by N log Q where E is given in volts. Now let us come back to the cell. The potential of the cell is given by E is equal to EC minus EA. Now EC and EA are the reduction potential at the cathode and anode. The equation is not complete without the consideration of the functional potential. Now let us understand what is a functional potential when two ionic solutions are separated by a porous membrane there is difference in the mobility and the concentration of the ions. Because of this difference a potential is developed across the membrane. Now this is called as the junctional potential. This magnitude can be large but to reduce this potential a very high concentration of salt is used in the bridge. The characteristic of the salt is that the mobility of cations and anions are approximately equal which help in reducing the junction potential. So the equation that we have seen above can be rewritten as E is equal to EC plus EA plus EJ where EJ is the junction potential. Now let us come and understand the concept of pH and blood gases. Now pH is the power of concentration of hydrogen ions. It is the negative base 10 of logarithm of the activity of H plus ions concentration which is pH is equal to minus log 10 in bracket H plus where H plus is measured in molarity. The P stands for a German word called as Prozen. Prozen means power but there is a controversy regarding it like the French refers it as Proese meaning power and Latin terms like potentia, hydrogeny also stands for the capacity of hydrogen. Whatever the controversy may be in every language P stands for power. So we will stick to it. It is now let us come back what it indicates. It is an indicator for acidity or alkalinity. The normal pH is from 0 to 14. The solutions or the substances that are neutral is 7 on the pH scale. The values less than 7 is acidic and the values more than 7 is called basic. The whole body tries to maintain the pH in the neutral zone. The arterial plasma has a pH of 7.38 to 7.42 and venous of 7.36 to 7.40.
whenever the pH of the system shifts to right or left, the body tries to restore it by various defense mechanisms. The first one to come into picture is the body buffers. It acts within seconds to minutes. If the issue is sorted out, the body continues with its work. But if the pH is not still controlled, then the second line of defense comes into picture. It is the lungs that play a vital role. The lungs increase the ventilation. As a result, it washes off a great amount of carbon dioxide from the body. The importance of carbon dioxide is that it combines with water to form bicarbonate, which is a weak acid. Further, if the pH is still not maintained, then the kidneys come into picture. With its innate ability to excrete out the extra acid or base from it and which is a lifesaver. But it comes into the picture only after many hours and days. Now let's understand the concept of blood gases. The important blood gas law that we must remember is the fixed law of diffusion. It consists of the diffusion of a gas across a permeable membrane is directly proportional to the surface area of the membrane, diffusion constant and the difference of the partial pressures across the membrane and is inversely proportional to the tissue. It demonstrates the diffusion behavior of various gases across the alveolar and respiratory membrane. Now let's understand Boyle's law. It states that under constant temperature and volume of a fixed mass of a dry gas is inversely proportional to the pressure exerted on it. As the volume of gas increases, the pressure decreases and vice versa. It is important to see that during inspiration and expiration as the diaphragm is pulled down and up, thereby reducing the reducing and increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity, thus changing the pressure of the cavity, which in turn helps in the movement of the air inside the lungs from the environment and thus helps in oxygenation. Now, let us see Dalton's law. In a mixture of gases, each gas behaves independently of the other gases. The partial pressure of an individual gas is independent of the partial pressure of the other gases, but the total pressure of the mixture is equal to the pressure of all the gases. It is important in high altitudes and thus also for the oxygenation. Now, let us see what is Charles law. It states that at constant pressure, volume of gas is proportional to the absolute temperature. Another variant of this law is that at constant volume, pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. Now, let us understand what is Henry's law. It states that at constant temperature, the amount of gas dissolved in a liquid will be directly proportional to the partial pressure of gas with which the liquid is in equilibrium with. Now, Graham's law. Diffusion of a molecule is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight and directly proportional to their solubility. The gases moves from a higher partial pressure to a zone of lower partial pressure. Now, let us see how it happens. Thus, the Thus, we are trying to understand the partial pressure of the oxygen in the atmosphere is higher than the partial pressure of oxygen in the lungs. The smallest unit of exchange of gases in lungs are the alveoli. The deoxygenated blood come by the pulmonary artery to the alveoli and the oxygenated blood passes out the alveoli via the pulmonary artery. During inspiration, the thorax creates a negative atmospheric pressure which sucks in air inside. This air contains the atmospheric air which has a higher partial pressure of oxygen and a lower pressure of carbon dioxide. 
the alveoli is separated from the blood via a respiratory membrane. This membrane separates the blood from the alveoli. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide inside the alveoli is 400 mmHg and oxygen is 100 mmHg. The blood that is carried by the pulmonary artery has an oxygen pressure of 40 mmHg and a carbon dioxide at 46 mmHg. Because of the difference in concentration gradient, the oxygen diffuses out from the alveoli into the pulmonary artery. The opposite occurs with carbon dioxide. As the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more in the pulmonary artery, the carbon dioxide diffuses out from the artery into the alveoli. The CO2 is then washed off by expiration. This oxygenated blood is then carried by the pulmonary vein to the systemic circulation. While passing via the various vessels of different diameters, the blood picks up the metabolic products which changes the pH of the blood. In metabolically active tissues, they consume oxygen and produce carbon dioxide. As a result, the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood reduces and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood increases. Now, let us understand what are the components of blood gas analysis. First, we will be seeing is a pH electrode. As discussed in the starting of the module, the pH has a very vital role to play in the body. Here in this segment, we will discuss about the measurement of the pH in the blood. It consists of a reading electrode, an amplifier, a pH display and a reference electrode. Now, let us understand each in a little more detail. The reading electrode. The reading electrode is a silver, silver chloride wire inside a neutral potassium chloride solution which is buffered in neutral pH 7. The end of the electrode is covered with a pH sensitive element which is fixed at the end of the electrode. The reference electrode, it contains the silver, silver chloride in potassium chloride solution. The amplifier amplifies the signal and sends the information to the pH display which in turn shows the pH measure of the solution. The figure 2 shows a schematic diagram of the pH electrode. Then we have seen how the pH electrodes work. In this segment, till now we have understood what are the potential changes happening, what are potentiometers, what are the basic electrochemical reactions and how they differ from each other. Now, in the figure 2 that we have seen, in this we have seen what is a pH electrode. Now, let us discuss how this pH electrode work. When an acidic solution or blood that has more H plus ions comes in contact with the outer surface of the pH sensitive glass electrode, the pH ions align on the periphery or the outer border of the electrode. This in turn leads to the accumulation of H plus ions from inside of the KCL solution. This leads to their accumulation on the outside surface of the border. This disproportionate accumulation of H plus ions along the inside and outside of the glass electrode generates a potential change. The pH of the system now is determined by comparing the potential difference between the recording electrode and the reference electrode. The reference electrode has a fixed potential. So, in this scenario, when there is more H plus in the blood, the pH is shown as below 7. Now, let us take the scenario when there are less H plus ions in the blood. In other words, it is basic. The electrode when inserted inside the blood sample, the H plus ions from the blood attaches with outer surface of the pH sensitive glass electrode. 
This in turn leads to the accumulation of H plus ions from the potassium chloride solution to the inner surface of the glass electrode. The number of H plus ions accumulation is more inside than outside the membrane. This generates a potential and it is measured against the reference electrode. Thus, the resultant value is pH more than 7 or in other words, it is basic. The important points to be kept in mind is both the electrodes must be kept at 37 degree centigrade. It must be calibrated with buffer solutions of known pH. Now, let us come to the carbon dioxide electrode. It is a modified pH electrode. It takes into consideration the fact that carbon dioxide when combines with water forms carbonic acid. The carbonic acid then dissociates into H plus and HCO3 minus or bicarbonate. The hydrogen ions formed is proportional to the amount of partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood. When the carbon dioxide diffuses inside the aqueous solution, it brings a potential change in the glass electrode. Thus, the pH can be calculated as described previously. But how do then calculate the pCO2? It is given by the formula where pH is equal to pKa plus log CHCO3 by partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Now, AcO2 where pKa is a dissociation constant equilibrium which is constant for the dissociation of carbonic acid in water. AcO2 is the solubility coefficient for carbon dioxide in water. The figure 3 shows the schematic diagram of the carbon dioxide electrode. The essential points to be noted in this modified pH electrode is that it is in contact with sodium bicarbonate. It is separated from the blood by a rubber or Teflon semi-permeable membrane and thus we have seen how the pH or how the carbon dioxide electrode works. Let us come to the oxygen electrode. It is also called as the polarographic or Clark oxygen electrode. Nowadays, the electrodes are referred to as polarographic because they do not contain mercury. Many oxygen electrodes are also referred to as amphirometric, meaning that they are mainly for measuring the current, but polarometric is more interested in voltage. Before we go into the details of the procedure, let us hold back for a while and discuss the history of this wonderful electrode. It was developed by Leland C. Clark. It is very interesting as why he developed the electrode. Clark's main discovery was a bubble oxygenator that was used for the first time in cardiopulmonary bypass surgery. But when he approached editors for publishing his finding, he was denied. The argument given by the editor was that the oxygen tension in the blood that was coming out from the device could not be measured. This affected him emotionally. He then decided to develop a device that can measure the oxygen tension in the blood. Thus, this device was invented. The contribution of this device in the modern medicine is enormous as innumerable lives have been saved and it will be fun to know how it works with further discussion. The figure 4 shows the schematic diagram of the oxygen electrode. The oxygen electrode consists of a cathode, an anode, electrolyte and a membrane. The cathode and anode are surrounded by electrolyte. They together are called the reaction chamber. The reaction chamber is separated from the blood sample by a membrane. This membrane is made up of tetrafluoroethylene. 
it is very selective for oxygen. The main purpose of this electrode is to measure the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. It consists of a platinum cathode and a silver, silver chloride anode. They are placed in a solution of sodium chloride. On application of 700 millivolt, the following reaction happens. Add cathode, which is the platinum. The O2 combines with two molecules of H2O and four electrons to give rise to four ions of OH minus. In electrolyte, NaC plus plus OH give rise to NaOH plus Cl minus. At anode, Ag plus Cl minus combines to form AgCl and release of an electron. The oxygen is dissolved in the electrolyte. It is thus reduced at the cathode and silver is oxidized at anode. The blood specimen is separated by a porous tetrafluoroethylene membrane. Now, when the electrode is dipped inside the solution or the blood, the oxygen diffuses inside the electrode based on their partial pressure difference so that oxygen tension in blood equilibrate with the electrolyte. The diffused oxygen is reduced at the cathode inside the reaction chamber. This results in current flow that is dependent on the amount of transformed oxygen. The membrane plays a major role. It protects the platinum electrode from becoming encrusted with various proteins of blood. It also provides a predictable diffusion distance for oxygen. The electrode response is dependent on the diffusion distance because if the diffusion distance is more, then the electrode will take time to respond. But if the diffusion distance is less, then the response time of the electrode can be minimized. This is one of the reasons why today's electrodes are placed right next to the membrane. The response time is also dependent on the permeability of the membrane. Just imagine, how can you work inside a house if it is too crowded or dirty? So, if the membrane is permeable to various proteins, it will disturb the reactivity and response of the electrode. Now, let us talk about the ion sensitive electrode. It measures the concentrations of potassium, sodium, chloride, calcium, lactate and glucose. The basic structure is same as like the other electrodes. It consists of a measuring electrode, a reference electrode and a reference solution which has an electrolyte with known concentration. The measuring electrode is surrounded by an electrolyte with a known concentration. The electrode is separated from the blood sample by the selective permeable membrane which is a PVC solvent. The main role of the membrane is to allow only specific ions inside the solution. The specificity of this membrane is purely due to the presence of ionophores inside the membrane. The ionophores collect an ion from the blood sample and membrane boundary. They then diffuse inside the membrane and once their concentration increases, they move to the other side of the membrane where they again increases the concentration and diffuses to the reference solution. The collection of the ions in the reference solution is simple diffusion rule with either increase or decrease of specific ions in the reference solution the potential is generated in the electrode. This potential is compared with the reference electrode. The magnitude of potential difference is directly related to the concentration of ions in the sample which is shown in figure 5. The figure 5 is a schematic diagram of the ion 
specific electrode. Let's see the calibration of blood gas analyzer. The question that must be asked for any equipment is the equipment able to give the same results over and over again and how reliable is it? Is the machine able to give the same result with any neutral feed? To answer all these questions, we must calibrate the equipment. The main concept of calibration is that it helps in maintaining the accuracy of the equipment. The device gives values of the test sample and it is compared with the calibrated standard value. In the ABG machine, the calibrated machine cal calibration is done with known concentration of standard buffers and calibrated solution. Now it consists of certain steps. First, the gas mixtures of high and low concentration of O2 and CO2 are alternatively admitted in the same chamber. Then the O2 and carbon dioxide electrode response are used to set high and low points of partial pressure of carbon dioxide and partial pressure of oxygen curves. Now adjusted by the electrode responses that are being referred to one level either high or low two levels both high and low. The very important parameter that must be kept constant is the temperature of the electrode system and sample chamber which is maintained at 37 degree centigrade. After calibration is done the machine is fit to perform the procedures. Specifications of a good blood gas analyzer. It must be fully automated, fast electrolyte with blood gas analyzer and upgradable. It must be able to measure pH, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, partial pressure of oxygen, lactate, glucose, sodium, carbon calcium, potassium. The parameters must be measured simultaneously. The volume of the sample should be less than 100 microliters. The analysis time must be less than 60 seconds. The data display should be well illuminated and have the provision for storage and must have the capacity to interface a computer. It should also have the connectivity via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The power supply should be by both AC and DC sources. Backup of more than 12 hours with rechargeable battery and minimum of 3 months of patient data backup. It must also do the auto calibration before every test. Now let's summarize what all we have understood in this module. The blood gases follow the gas laws and their diffusion is primarily based on their partial pressures. The blood contains carbon dioxide, oxygen and various ions which have a physiological significance. The analysis of the constituents is done by the blood gas analyzer. It constitutes of electrodes and surrounding solutions. It follows the simple principles of potentiometric electrochemical analysis. The potential generated at the measuring electrode is compared with the reference electrode and the pH value is determined. The determined pH value will describe the acidic or basic condition of the body and the machine should be calibrated every time before the start of the procedure. We must also understand that calibration helps in maintaining the accuracy of the equipment. So in the next quadrant that is quadrant number 3 self assessment is there which consists of lot of questions like the loss of electrons is called as oxidation and reduction. And every other options are present. And then in the last quadrant we will be seeing the references. I hope you like the module and it will be nice 
that if we have understood lot of things out of this module because every component of this module has been a constant research by so many years and by so many scientists and this is the gist of everything that they have understood and this is science science means progress thank you so much